In my previous video about the XOR cipher, I showed you how we could use the XOR logical function to encrypt a sequence of bits using another sequence of bits. This is what we saw. I've got some letters here, some characters, and I'm converting each of these into an ASCII code. I'm just using a spreadsheet function to do this, and I'm getting a numeric ASCII code in base 10. Then I'm using another spreadsheet function, dec to bin, to convert those denary ASCII codes into binary ASCII codes. Notice how I've specified that I want 8 bits as well. So there we go, that's my plain text if you like, but converted to binary. There's no real encryption yet. And now here's my key. And this can be any random sequence of 8 bits. I've chosen just alternating zeros and ones. And now I'm XORing the two sets of bits together. Now just to make my life a little bit easier, I've written my own spreadsheet function to automate this. There is a built-in XOR function, but it'll only do one bit at a time. I want to work with groups of bits. So like I say, I've written my own function. I'll show you how I did that. If I press Alt F11, you can see I've inserted a module, and there's my function. Simple little function, I've called it my XOR. It has two input parameters, the binary code and the key. And each of these is going to be a group of 8 bits. And I've got a little for loop here, which is scanning across, just visiting each bit at a time. So I've got a little counter here running from 1 to the length of the binary code, which of course is 8 in this example. I'm using the mid function to extract the first bit when counter is 1. Let's just have a look at the parameters of the mid function here. It takes a string, a starting position, which is given by counter, so first time through the loop, that is 1, and then a length, which you can see I've set to 1. So that is going to give me the first character of the binary code and put it into code bit when counter is 1, first pass through the loop. And I'm doing the same here. I'm getting the first bit of the key. So I have the first bit of the binary code, the first bit of the key, and then I'm just doing a little test here. If they're different, then the result will be 1. And I'm just concatenating that onto a result string there. Otherwise, if they're the same, the result will be a 0. So that's essentially an XOR function. We go around the loop again, counter becomes 2. So now we're comparing the second bit of the binary code with the second bit of the key. And round and round we go, until finally this gives me the result I'm looking for, and that's how we do a return in VBA. You can do it by hand if you want, but this actually lets me play around with different values. Alt F11, back to my spreadsheet, and there is my encrypted data. Now just for convenience, I can turn those back into denary. I'm using the bin to dec function this time, and then I can turn each of these back into a character that I can recognise, although I could just make that the ciphertext, why not? It can be a bunch of numbers. But here, maybe this just looks a little bit more interesting. So there it is, there's my ciphertext for the word zip. Decryption is the opposite process, and of course the beauty of the XOR cipher is that if you apply the same key to the ciphertext, you'll get back to the original text, and that's what I'm doing down here. But there's a problem, and here's the problem. I'm going to change the word zip to the word zoo. And you can see that the letter O is always giving me the same substitution character. And that's potentially a problem. If, for example, I put in the word T, a crypto analyst might go, well, that's probably the letter E because E is the most commonly used letter in the alphabet. And T's kind of up there as well with the most used letters of the alphabet, so that might be a T. Of course, that isn't necessarily true, but it's a good place to start. So even with the word zoo, they might say, well, you know, that could be an E. It's most commonly used. Or they might say you often see a double O in a word, like the word book or cook or something like that. So again, you could assume that that's an O. It gives you a place to start and like I say, you could analyse the ciphertext and potentially work out what the original text was. So let me show you an improvement. I've got it here, I've just hidden the columns, let's unhide them. And I'm doing something ever so slightly different now. I've got the word zip, as before, 
converting each character into a base 10 ASCII code and then converting those into binary just like I did before. And now I'm combining these three groups of bits together just to make one big continuous block. You can see all I've actually done is concatenate those three groups together. And now I'm going to apply a permutation. I'm going to do something to it. What I've actually done here is I've just taken the bit off the end and moved it to the front. So everything is kind of shunted along a little bit. But what I do here doesn't really matter. I could use a, a rail fence cipher, for example, as long as I jumble this up in some way. And now I'm separating them out and I'm just using spreadsheet functions to do that. So I've got the left, mid and right function going on there, look. Okay, now I'm going to apply my key to these new groups of bits. So there's my key again, same key as before. I XOR this group of bits with the key and here's my new ciphertext. If I want I can convert it back into Denary and then I can take each of those ASCII codes and turn it back into a character. You can see the result is different, but here's the beauty of it. If I put a letter O here, notice how it's kind of changed everything. Let's do that again. Yeah, I've got H, A, and then some strange sort of I with an accent on the top of it. I just change one character in the original text, and two characters in the cipher text have changed. If I change this O as well, yeah, you can see the two O's are different. So making a small change to the plain text is having a big impact on the ciphertext. Just by adding this extra little step, I've confused the ciphertext even more. And that's ideal, that's kind of what we want in a cipher. I'm going to show you another improvement now, which includes principles that you'll see in modern day ciphers. So let's unhide this. Looks a little bit complicated at first sight. Let me talk you through it. Same as before, getting the ASCII code for each character, converting each of those ASCII codes into binary, and, same as before, I'm pulling them all together, so I'm creating a single block. Then I'm chopping the block in half. So I'm taking the left half of it and putting it over here. You can see I'm just using a function to do this. And I'm taking the right half and putting it over here. And now I'm doing something to the right half. I'm doing a permutation. Same as before, I'm just taking the bit off the right hand side and moving it over to the left. Here's my key and I'm going to XOR the permutated right half with the key. So I produce this. Then I'm going to XOR the left half with the right half and pull them back together. When I've done that, I chop them in half again. OK, you're thinking why pull them back together and chop them in half? I really just want to separate the steps. So I pull them back together, chop them in half, and then I swap the halves over. So the left half has become the right half, and the right half has become the left half. And now I'm going to do the same again. I permutate the right half, I apply the key to it, so I XOR the key with this right half. I've got some ciphertext here, and then I'm going to XOR that with the left half. Pull the two back together, and I've kind of had enough of this now, so I'm just going to separate them out into three groups of eight again, convert those groups of eight bits back into denary, and then take those denary values and turn them back into characters. And there's my ciphertext. And if I make a change over here, you can see it's had a massive impact on the ciphertext. I changed one character in the plain text, and all of the ciphertext has changed. This is a lot more secure. Now this is actually illustrating a number of principles which are used in modern day ciphers. One of the principles I'm using here is that I'm encrypting a whole block of text rather than individual characters. Another principle is that I'm doing a permutation before I apply the XOR. Now I could also permutate the key. Or I could do some kind of substitution as well, but I'm manipulating the bits before I do the XOR. And then once I've changed one half of it, I'm XORing it with the other half. I swap the two around and I do it again. Another principle that's going on here is that I'm using two rounds of encryption. 
A modern day cipher might use multiple rounds of encryption. A modern day cipher might take the original key, generate several sub keys and do each round with a different sub key. And this is just one block of text. If I'm encrypting a lot of text, then I can break it into separate blocks and I can do each block separately, rather like I've done here. But the cipher text of one block could become part of the encryption process for the next block. This is called block chaining. You could build a very, very complicated cipher. But don't forget, a cipher needs to produce diffused and confused cipher text. But it also has to encrypt and decrypt quickly. It has to be efficient. The best modern ciphers make use of permutation and substitution. If you want to know more, take a look at the DES cipher. That's the Data Encryption Standard. It is still used today, although it's been superseded by something called the Advanced Encryption Standard.